And it's map two between G2 and Ents. And Ents, they have a map advantage and are looking to finish this series off in a 2-0 fashion. G2 looking to salvage their series on their own map choice. All right, well, Ents have chosen oh. to start out on that CT side instead of the T side, and they've already lost an initial pick on towards Ariel at this short position. Now the A split comes out for G2. And straight up short. Now Sunny able to hold from CT for the moment, but Jax coming up long is able to get another, and that's going to be the two-man advantage for now, but not for long. Hang on. Alu all the way from behind. Two quick ones oh. coming in from the flank, and Sergey almost shutting this round down already. Amanek just committing to the plant now. Alu looking to close the distance, has to fight from two angles, but he's oh. unable to isolate the fight. It's actually Sergey coming in from short to find the kill, and that's going to be a quick retake coming out from Ants. Oh, it was for four on two, Mac. Alu just hits two massive frags all mm -hmm. the way down from the bottom of long, and G2... They lose the pistol. Great start for Ents. The element of surprise. It's beautiful, really. It wasn't it pretty, is. but he got it done. And that's what matters at the end of the day. That's it. Ents get that pistol. Get off to a good start on the CT side. As for G2... Once again, not forcing in the second round, choosing to take that save round with the pistols invested. Try to do a little damage, chip down that CT economy before moving into a gun round in the next. Yeah, it looks like it might be a little bit of a quicker play here from Ents, at least. They got aggressive early on in the piece, but they've backed off. Big damage from the grenade onto Jax. That was just fanged through the mid doors. G2 suffering as a result. Look at how low they are across the board. Jax, Kenny, Amanek all getting tagged up early. It's going to put Ents in a nice spot to finish this round off without potentially even losing guns. Let's see if they can finish here. Alu just waiting. Kenny, tight line held, but he's unable to connect. And it's the spam to get first blood. Alu doing God's work at the moment is now Sunny waiting for the push up short. Let's see if he can uh, deny them getting to elbow. It looks like it's going to be Alu. Oh. And CT. Perfect <laughs> flash there coming out from Ariel to blind all the remaining T's. And that was easy peasy for Sunny. Very nicely done. Now into the buy for G2. But Ents, once again, something that they've been doing so fantastically today is just winning these rounds. Anti Ecos, sometimes even gun rounds, very cleanly on the CT side. Keeps their money nice and strong and allows them to have a little bit more resilience and recover from a few of these losses should they incur them. G2 into their first buy. Mm -hmm. Well, it is G2's map pick, so they're going to have something in their back pocket here on the T side of Dust2. I think we're in the front pocket at this point. Yeah. First gun round, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just trying to reach for whatever's easiest. And for their own right, though, do play a little bit of Dust2 and they're not too shabby on it. No. So... Look, Mac, your prediction of a 2-0 today is looking not so bad. Yeah, I think this is going to be yet another close one. It is 2-0 already, though. Like, mm. just look at the scoreboard. Great. You've already won your prediction, Mac. That's not your best joke, Pilly. What do you mean? What joke? That's it, a horrible I joke. I mean, unfortunately, Mac, I think it probably is one of his better jokes. But <laughs> look, I actually agree with you there. You know what is the joke? This friendship. I thought you guys would be there to support me. But apparently... Colleague. Not. Colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> Friends. Let's get this straight, all right? Maybe not. Uh, as you do see, G2, they've taken that catwalk control. Don't have a whole lot of utility left over, though. Only three smokes, a handful of flashes. So they're going to throw that progression smoke up onto the ledge here. The smoke uh, on, top, on top of the boxes, which allows them to cross as a one-way. Alu trying to peer over the top of that, find any T's in over the top of that one. And Hunter now throwing out those flashbangs any second here to send the boys over. Well, oh. there's a good shot from Alu to start things off. 30 seconds for G2 to work their way into the bomb side. And oh. Alu, oh. he hits another one. A flash up into the air for himself allows him to cross toward the site. And maybe there's three on the cards. Kenny S facing. Oh. Alu gets himself three. And Jackson Amanek now have to clutch a two on four. Looks like we've got God Alu in the server today. Oh, Jackson that's able it. to get that one from above. GMP. Round's Good over. Cover. Round's over. Yeah, no time. Can't He's just going to fight for his life here. Door stuck. Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. Oh, that is not good, though. They've lost three guns on the way out there. They're trying to hunt down Amanek with all of their players, and they've dropped a hell of a lot of cash towards the end there. Hello. He's just seen his uh, sunnies peering over the top of those smoke. That's it. That smoke? Not much at all, and a nice couple of flicks to really secure that round for Ents. Alu. Doing so much work now.
And that's going to be three in a row. So, yes, again, look, the economy, it's in a bit of a rough way in G2. They realise this. They're going for the miscellaneous by the mixed bag around Aminex to save AK. Missed Molly for Sunny, and that's going to be a bit of long control for G2. And he already off to a good start. So, two is Ariel. You talk about long control for G2. I'm not seeing it anymore, Mac. <laughs> Um, and next, the only one that's gotten anything done. It's two on four again. And G2 just back into the same old, same old position, aren't they? It's early days here on Dust 2. That is fair. But ends are off to a great start. I've been waiting for that secondary AWP on Yampi. And so crisp, so clean on that AWP. So whenever I see the double AWP set up from Ents, especially when you do have Alu firing pretty nicely, that's a scary prospect indeed. Ants dropping four guns in the previous to Amanek mostly, and then in that round, dropping three guns over there towards the pistols means that their money, I was just praising them for how cleanly they've been closing out these rounds. Completely the opposite these last couple of rounds. Look at their cash. It's absolutely cooked. G2 now mm -hmm. with a window to turn this game around. amanex gone towards that MAC-10 after being left alive in one of those previous rounds, and it seems like G2 wants to pick up the pace towards B here potentially. He's been pretty fine at using this MAC-10 though, especially over on train. He mm. picked it up a few times when he had money for extra. And, oh, a big pick, or oh, big damage already onto Nexa. Now, going into the site, great utility usage. Sergey drops himself another flash to go wide, and he cannot snag another, but Yampy able to come in in time on the cross. Now it's going to be a three on four for the retake. Ents with that man advantage. Yeah, still not looking too bad for Ents here, to be honest. They've got a lot of util. Yeah. You do have Sunny on the big flank right around here. As Ents setting up for this retake, still, like you said, plenty of utility, but aggression actually from Kenny evens up the odds. Back to three on three. The grenade, though, could prove imperative. With Nexa down on 20 HP, I wonder if that gets thrown in and connects. What happens? Sunny's still holding on to it and perhaps won't even be the one to use it because he's the guy in upper dark. Flashes are going through courtesy of Yampi. Oh. Kenny, what is that? <laughs> Thought he's he not safe. hiding. He's not hiding at all. And Sonny has walked in. He's got the double. That's enough for ends. They're going to be 5-0 and zero up. <laughs> Kenny was looking for his keys. He <laughs> lost he's his keys. Got it. He's lost around. <laughs> oh, he's lost no. He didn't oh. have a defuse kit. This ground is a clown fiesta. Oh my Everything God. going everywhere, but look, at least Ents have done a huge amount of financial damage to G2. But the same can be said for G2 as well as Kenny. If he I was one with the bricks there. If I can't see you, you, you can't, can't see me. me. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta, if you sit still, it's a lot harder to see you. That's what I'm they tell me. Shh, I'm camouflaged. Yeah. Oh. Ents, real scuffed by heading into this one. This is what I was talking about. That round, again, comes down to a one-man alive situation. Sunny clutching it out. Yampy, though, just going across mid-doors and absolutely dominating Nexa. Puts them at a man advantage, and he's pushing lower dark as well. Oh, Sergei's in such a good spot, but has actually fallen off. The boost still gets one through the flash, and Yampy comes in from behind. Yes, he's stuck behind a smoke, but there's no chance they're going to look around behind them. He'll get oh. the free kill onto Kenny, drops the bomb, slows G2 down, and now ends in the perfect spot to win this round. And that was the issue as well. Just having that scout means you're not able to get multi-frags too easily. Tag through the wall onto Jax, and that might just be the securing situation. But let's see what Hunter can do. He's got full HP. Jax with a nice headshot. That's control of Upper Dark now. And Hunter wants to make an aggressive play. He's going to find both 2v3. G2 get it over the line. Yeah, and that's a breaking point for Ents. All of the work done in the last couple of rounds by G2 just chipping away at that economy. It starts with Abenek getting those kills towards the end of that initial game. Gun round. Following that, the pistols taking away a hell of a lot of guns off of Ents. And then that last round, just coming down to a 1v1 where Sunny wins it, means that they have no cash left in reserve. And with Hunter coming through with that 2k, that breaks the money of Ents. And they're forced onto the force buy here, trying to make the scouts and the pistols work up against G2. Wow. I've seen Ents have success with uh, some weaker buys on train, although admittedly not generally this week. They were more sort of half buys with some Famasas and uh, an M4 or two. Double scout though, definitely workable on a map like Dust 2. A lot of long range angles. Tag up a couple of guys, get those pistols going to work. G2's not running into anything too unnecessary yet, but Jampy's going to be boosted up. Jax looks like he's waiting for that, but perhaps not. Not to any significant damage going across to either side just yet.
No utility left over here for Ants. They're just going to have to rely on hitting some pretty sharp shots. G2. Still some utility left over. Slowly working their way through the map. Flash up Catwalk here to take control. And I'd imagine they're just going to go for this execute. Nice flash onto the line. Allows Hunter to find that pick onto Yampi. Gives G2 the man advantage. And now they're going to execute onto this A side as well. Limiting the angles that Alu can use. Oh, and the drops come through. Alu hasn't spotted that at all. Amanek with the opening. And now, yes, there's a bit of long control, but just with these pistols, it's going to be hard. And Amanek looking to close the distance, looking to farm up a storm with the MAC-10. Mm. He's hungry. He wants some extra money in the bank, and he's just running straight towards him. Aerial dink down to 42. Sunny ready to peek on the contact. Two on the short side now, and Sunny <gasps> can't get it over the line. That's going to be both going down at long, and mm. now it's all up to Sergei to maybe find himself a weapon. But that's going to be three on the board for G2. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate for Ents that they aren't able to get a little bit of economic damage done there. But either way, you reap what you sow, I suppose. And a couple of really close rounds have put Ents into a pretty rough position. So okay, saves his Deagle and armor. He'll be able to put that to good use next round. But Hamanek creeps forward. He'll eventually drop. Next player's not going to get there in time. So Sergey will survive. Uh, I like this variation that we saw from G2 on that A execute. Something that's gaining a lot of popularity here is just uh, instead of throwing the smoke on towards the dumpsters there and uh, then crossing up this right side of Cat, you get the smoke that lands here instead and you push through it with a couple of your rifley boys. Just different uh, approaches you can take towards that A site is always good to see. And that's the, the mark of a, a team that really is feeling quite comfortable on the T side of Dust 2. Mm. They'll be feeling pretty comfortable about this coming round as well, G2. Knowing that Ensa down only onto the pistols. And they're not even the good pistols. Deagle here for oh. Sergey. And he can't land his shots. So G2, look like they'll get through this one relatively comfortably. Really solid Antico coming through. Let's see if Sunny. Look, he's managed to get a single shot off, but unfortunately, it wasn't on the head and Nexa fought his way back. So mm. speaking of back, it's the G2 back in the game. Four to four now, all tighter. Heading into round nine. Who will edge out in the lead? Will G2 carry this momentum forward? Or Ents, mm. now back on the bike. Can they get another on the board before it gets too deep into the half? Alu's gone back onto the AWP. It's going to be a glass cannon AWP from him. But to be honest, I don't mind that at all. I think he's been really, really solid with the AWP so far here on Dust2. And to put him onto a rifle would be doing him a disservice. See what kind of an impact Alu can have. Yampi over to the B bomb site again. Probably is going to have to do a bit of work and he'll get his incendiary down right at what looks like the perfect time. They're going to go through it. Maybe it came a bit too late, but Yampi's still alive on the site. Sergey has been bought enough time to find himself a triple kill. And that's going to be that, probably. Kenny S. A one on three. Oy, that's not where you want to be. Sunny will finish it. 5 4 good round for Ensign. That's now the second or third time that G2 have tried to get into the B bomb site and have. Kind of almost been stopped in their tracks. They haven't really been stopped in their tracks because they have gotten into the bomb site. Ooh. But it hasn't been the clean entry that they've needed it to be to confirm the round. And it took so long to get Sunny, or rather Yampy, off the site that Sergei had so much time to just do some damage from the window. Well, that's it. He was the critical piece of the puzzle there, just buying so much time, drawing so much attention there from Heaton. And because of that, it allowed Sergei to come in from window, get another two, and managed to triple up in the end. So really solid round coming up from Ents, all things considered. Now, G2, they're going to be pushing on the other extremity back to long this time. Ariel has already used all of his utility, and now he just has to rely on his aim, but he can't see a thing because of the corner smoke. Well, needs to get back out of dodge here as well because he's really under pressure. G2, though. They elect not to go through the smoke. And Alu clears out short. So this is a perfect setup for Ents. They really only have one angle to watch. They know the long is dirty, but they know that short's clean. They know there's nothing happening over toward B. Nothing's happening in mid. Ents under absolutely no pressure at the moment. And G2 will just bide their time, wait that clock down a little. Yeah, we haven't seen this situation so far, so let's see how Ents deal with it. Alu happy just to play from the corner and deny the cross to sight. G2, plenty of utility to get across. A couple of flashes to put them through. And Alu just waiting for the call to flash over to Long Sun. He wants to go in. Smoke has actually missed the mark there over towards short. Someone's thrown that 
A bit of Rai and Alu, he's going to have a field day. Flash comes through, it's actually a team flash. Sunny already oh. takes two before it though, so great defense. 5v2, this should be an end round every day of the week. It is great work from Sunny. You say Alu's going to have a field day, but he's not given much of an opportunity. Mm. When Sunny is able to find three kills like that, Kenny has a one on five. He'll save his gun. 18 seconds left in the round. Mm. And a very nice fight back again. It sort of feels like they're... Their trademark in this series is a few rounds being put together by G2. and starts to look a little bit shaky. And oh, Kenny, okay, yes, 360 no scope. Not quite, but it is going to be the 360 scope. <laughs> That's the end of Sunny right into a Kobe. So this round's got it all. Absolutely dunked on with that one. Big damage, big round. And a kill after time as well. Ents could not ask for more after that one. Do we get the POV of Kenny S with a 360 no scope scope? Huh? No, but we do get Sunny in the dark again. In the darkness. You know, like, I'm Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I caught along. I hope yeah. chat did as well. Yeah. Where is she? Well, off we go again. Alu this time has armor, and he's also got himself an opening pick onto Kenny S. So, great start to the round here for Ents. Even better, compounded with that damage onto Hunter. Quickly up into the A-bomb site goes G2, but they're going to have to deal with Sunny. They're going to have to deal with Alu and already Hunter and Amanek down low on HP. They're stopped in their tracks, G2. They're scared of pushing forward, and that's a free kill for Alu. What is this map? It's just like that every single round. Ooh. And Alu is putting on oh. a clinic at the moment. That's a 4K. My Gorgeous. God. And seven for Ents. Spacking him around on the A side, isn't he? Very, very nice performance from the man. I mentioned it in the pre-show. I was like, hey, look, Alu, looking pretty good on train. Let's see if he carries it across the dust too. And so far, so good. Hitting almost everything that goes in his crosshairs. Yeah, and he said that Ents would go 2-0 here. So, you might be on the money for once, Mac. What do you mean for once? I always <laughs> make these calls. <laughs> I'm going to go make a compilation of it. Okay. I'd love to see it. I also make lots of calls that don't. You know, come to fruition, but, but don't we forget don't about put those. those in? We don't put those in. We the forget about those. That's it. Flash out mid from G2, trying to get something done with the pistols here. Oh, Alu again, gonna be able to play a crossfire here with Yempi as well. It's looking pretty good for the moment, but G2 reroute up short. That's gonna be the bomb left behind now. Nexa and Kenny S. They need to go back for it. The Eagle retrieved. And it's not overextending. Kenny just going to be taking oh. the fight solo. And with the Deagle, gets some good work done. Sunny with that MP9 could get some good jumping accuracy. Oh. But instead of taking the gamble, he just waits, uses that patience, and finds Kenny has to overextending. <laughs> Alu coming in on the flank, was hungry for more. And he's going to find himself a second in the uh, round. Alu is so. confident. Alu is 15 and 5 at the moment. He wants to pick oh, yeah. up those frags. Booch the HLTV rating a little bit. Oh, this is fantastic from Ents. They're really showing up today. Grinded out train. Now, instead of having to come back a little bit more, they're going to be the front runners here on Dust 2. Mm. And they're doing it on the CT side I as know. well. We, we, we never see that, at least in the regions that we cast. Mm. Usually the T side is is the team that's setting the momentum, setting the pace. Mm. But I feel like Ents are really the ones that are just, they're just absorbing everything that G2 throws at them like a sponge and, and reacting and responding accordingly. Well, Alu is pretty unstoppable at the moment on the A bomb site. Yampi's doing such a great job of not necessarily holding the B bomb site solo, but he's delaying long enough to give Ents the time to rotate across. And the rotations have been quick and on point from Ents. So it's all sort of working in cohesion right now on that CT side. And as you say, they're looking really, really good. G2's not finding many opening picks either. And uh, that's compounding the difficulty of the rounds. Into number 13. G2. Trying to take that long control. It's going to be delayed long take. Smoke onto the corner and some flashes over. Area was anti. Does get isolated and picked off. And Alu pushed off the angle as well. Hunter sneaks up catwalk and picks off Yampi as well. You were saying they were not getting the opening picks. This round's going pretty well for them. Well, they still have to deal with Alu. And they're going to put the double smoke up, get themselves across. Is there any damage? Is there a kill? Doesn't look like there will be. And this is probably the save call for Ents, even despite the fact that they've got a pretty decent economy built up. They do need to continue to think about the rest of the rounds in this half. And you got Alu with an AWP 
Sunny there, Sergei. They're going to get a great buy through next round. Yeah, they're thinking about this, though, Alu. Mm. Just going well, to see what he can do here. It's that pick onto Kenny S that's put a bit of doubt in their mind. Five on three, difficult. But four on three, maybe doable. Issue is that Amanek is coming in behind them through mid. So if Ents delay too long, they're going to lose this just by nature Aww. of that flank. But Sunny and Sergei, okay. they've pushed in. Amanek's found a double, though. And they do just by that time a little bit too long, Ents. Not that they were to know, but that is what has... Got them unstuck a little bit there. Great entry from Jax. Need to see a bit more of that. And Hunter, perfect timing, catches Yempi. Well, how's the economy now on G2? Let's have a look. They've got enough. They had like 9.3 on Alu and 8.3 on Yampi, so... But that financial pressure can really put them to a breaking point I'm going gonna, into round 14. I'm going to need Jax to get himself a primary weapon. Oh, there you go. He's just throwing that Xbox smoke. Crisis averted. Alu trying to test the waters down towards lowers here. Does drop the nade and doesn't lose his life. Sergey playing very close towards the tunnels. Just a flash to hold. And let's see how G2 go here again. Going to be going for the B site XC. And Sergey going to be playing gate instead this time. Yeah, no rotation coming in just yet, but Yampi's coming across. Sergey, nearly a two-man spray down, but helps out long enough, and Yampi through the smoke. That's the end of Nexa. Probably the end of the push as well for G2. They've got uh, Hunter walking into the A bomb site, and he'll drop down into CT spawn, but he's made plenty of noise. And the B site just does not seem to be it for G2. They've had so much difficulty getting into that site cleanly. I guess it's too late in the half to really make a difference. <laughs> Kenny. I just wanted to take a look at this long take from G2. I thought that was pretty cool. You got uh, a couple of old mates just chilling here next to the smoke. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see this uh, corner smoke getting thrown out as well as some flashes, which isolates Ariel here. And they're able to flash him off the line and just isolate that pick. Really like that from G2. And you can see the continual flashes being invested as they actually commit to taking that long control. That was two rounds ago. Last round, obviously, you saw that big play didn't work out as well for G2. So mixed results for them on this T side. Let's see if they can try to scrounge themselves a sixth round here or whether Ents will actually get towards that double digits. A pretty dominant scoreline on the CT side of Dust2, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Speaking of dominant scorelines, fellas, 100 Thieves. 16-3, wasn't it? First map. What was it second? 16-5. Oh, that's what I was saying. I was making this point the other day on the death segments that we do that no one watches is that, um, <laughs> you know... It feels bad, man. Pepper hands. 100 Thieves, they've gone down 0-2, but no. then they've recovered against some uh, other opponents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we thought Chaos was looking really good, but that's a nice response from 100 Thieves. Anyway, we're here to look at Ents and G2, and that's a great start for Yampi. Able to... Have a quick peek into upper tunnels. Clear that out. Sunny! Oh. They didn't check him properly. Kenny S yes, is going to die as a result. And now Alu starts to float back across. There is only the one smoke, so there's going to be a hole here if they do end up using it. The flash, though. Oh. Towards the line, but he still doesn't make it across, actually. It's just Nexa in the one on three now. And he's won these before, so let's see what he can do. Going back for more 30 seconds. And he hasn't been spotted on the cross, but Sergey has the line. Has been spotted though. Smoke about to fade, and another is actually going to be invested. Ants just happily playing this one shoulder to shoulder, waiting for Nexa to make a move. But Alu, he's going to be open to an attack from above. But this time they're just waiting for the bomb to go Come down. On. Great Let's patience. Go. Oh, I wanted to see the jumping orb kill. You know, love to see that here on Dust Two. Maybe oh. not going to come there down. You go. It does. You Never mind. It. Beautiful. I Hello. think that's the first time you haven't cast a curse to situation. You know what that reminds me of, Pilski? What does it remind you of, Jordan? It reminds me of a 10-5 first half. We're heading into the break. <laughs> Don't go too far. We'll be back <laughs> after this.
Well, the hype train has left the station and that's where Ents grabbed their first map in the series. Now onto map two, they're up 10 and five on G2's choice. Today is looking like a day of easy for Ents. Yeah, one to five odds favoring Ents now. A complete flip around from where we saw this series start. And now Ents onto their T side. They've hit double digits, a 10 to five score line where Alu has absolutely popped off as that CT side Alper on dust two. Now Ents taking this long control. Going for that initial fight, and G2, they choose to fall away. They choose to concede that long control and instead divert their attention to taking short, maybe pushing up a tunnel. That seems to be the case. Short control about to be found, but let's see where Alu heads. He's just looking for the info. Up a dark push mm. as well for G2. That's so much information now. And G2, they're just going to position themselves to go for the retake. Alu, what's he got for oh. us? Not much Hunter at the ready. Yeah, just kind of gets wrecked a little bit, but the two smokes do go down for Ents and they'll try to progress their way up to the bomb site, which they will do unhindered for now. Jax hits a great shot before he loses half of his HP. In fact, it's more than half of his HP, but still, he's alive. He's a gun in the game. It's five on three. Bomb plan is down, and that battle at bedroom doors is going to be all important. Well, Kenny S as well hasn't been spotted here at Gandalf, just waiting for the perfect moment to strike, waiting for the rest of the boys to come through. Looks like they're going to have to concede that long control. Oh, Aerial, nice shot. P250 traded back. Nexa looking good. Sunny with a bink down as well to 22. Make it nothing. Nexa looking good. Coming up short now. 3v1. Sergey has the long angle, but he needs to try to stop that bomb from going... Well, from being defused, and it's not going to happen. Hunter, mm. too sharp there at long range with a P2K. Yeah, now you see the CT side economy. Getting off to the good start that you'd want to see. Alu, crosshair placement, not really on point there. P maybe potentially Whoa. focused on the bigger picture as okay. he holds that lower dark angle. Some real sharp shots being hit on this pistol round. Keen to see whether Ents are going to take that same <laughs> approach as G2. Okay. And actually go for the that uh, half buy. Does seem like that's the case. Choosing to try to chip away at the CT economy rather than going for the force buy and dropping AKs forward. See how much damage they can get to G2's economy. They've very quickly made their way up catwalk here. And there's actually no one here for G2. Three players in the B bomb site. They've secured that long control. Bomb still over toward the B side of the map though for Ents. So even if they were to get into the A site, they're going to take a long time to get the bomb there and get the bomb down. So it's not uh, nothing to get too celebrated about. Yeah, that look. was good, Inglando. Doesn't seem like Ents are in a rush to get anywhere too fast, really. But they, I think they are sort of getting the sense now that no one's really challenging this A side of the map. They can probably just creep up Catwalk, and that's kind of what they're doing here. Sunny being pressured now by that utility, but he's going to pick up the bomb and meet up with the rest of the boys who are now starting to creep up Catwalk G2. 
Going to see how they try to complete this retake because uh, they've conceded this short control. What is their plan to be able to try to retake yeah. that area? And so pretty much cleared everything out. And it's a matter of time before the bomb goes down. Now, G2, they're going to be thinking, hmm, look, I haven't seen them anywhere else on the map. I think they're probably in the A site. They're well aware that they're going to have to retake. Yeah, so how are they going to use their utility on that retake? Because they've got a fair amount of it. They can leverage it to a round win. But maybe the Deagles will catch them off guard. And now keep an eye on Nexa as well. He's the only man with a kit here. So if he goes down and no one goes back for him, it could be dangerous. Aminek trying to clear the top of mid. Nexa able to trade or get another now. This is going to be the collapse. Sergei needs to try to trade it. It's not going to happen. Alu as well going to suffer the same fate. And that's nice. going to be the quad on the retake for Nexa. That is perfect. And that's a successful retake for G2. All those SMG kills, man. That's a ton of cash in the bank for Nexa. Sitting up at 6.6k now. Only one gun lost there from G2. But with the bomb plant, Ents get a whole lot of access to grenades that they might not have been able to afford in this round. Did see quite a heavy investment from some of the players going for Deagle and Armor. But they do have that full utility across the board. They've got that AWP. Ents has access to everything they could want in a round like this. Conversely, on the other side of the coin, though, G2, after only losing one gun, do build up a pretty solid amount of money. Exa drops Kenny S at AWP. And they should be pretty happy with where they're at as well. This is where Ents can really start to make some inroads. Sonny's quite quick down mid, but he's got to remember he's got the bomb. This is something that uh, he used to do on Mouse Sports as well. Back when Mouse uh, with Oscar used to be really, really sick on Dust2 and win the T side, like very, very one-sidedly. His Sonny was so good at working his way through lower dark and going and taking this catwalk control with minimal support, maybe only a couple of flashbangs or even just dry sometimes. And he's done that yet again here on Ents. Just very, very minimal utility usage. Maybe only a couple of flushes and one smoke invested. And Ents have taken this short control pretty effortlessly here. Very much uncontested by G2. Well, that's it, though. You've got to prioritize taking the short or taking long and it looks like long is going to be the answer up a dark push now coming through g2 just waiting flash comes through and that's a nice one for nexa it's over the top doesn't find sergey who's at the ready and hunter manages to maintain control with the trade but now that is going to be ends hitting the accelerator the short yeah now they're going to push in towards that a bomb site they're going to pick up the pace a little bit more see what Kenny S can do. Can he repeat the heroics of Alu? Well, he's being flashed off the line. That's a messy spray. Oh, a bit of lag, but in the end, yep, he has gotten himself that kill, so don't even worry about it, ladies and gentlemen. Ents are going to get into that bomb site. They've got the opening pick that they really wanted there. It's four on three. Yeah, he's trying to tussle for control of long, and he's got it now off of Jax. Last bullet. Big gamble. Oh, but Ariel fighting back for short control next. He got the 4K on the retake before, but this time he's up against two orbs. That AK on Sunny, and it looks like he's just going to be packing his bags. Happy re-picking up that AK. Yeah, look, save it if he can save that one gun, that's fine. Like, look at the rest of the money on G2. You know, they, they don't have any loss bonus. Oh, that's a sharp shot from Nexa re-picking into an AWP <laughs> line like that. That is ballsy, but he's got the aim to back it up. Does take that one gun away from Ents. Puts Alu in his place there, who hasn't really had any impact here on the T side. He was popping off on the CT side. Given that there hasn't been that many rounds, still time to get into the game for him. And Ents, I think, will be happy to take that first gun round. But this is the one for all the marbles here, Jordan. You do see them actually put G2's economy in a bit of a state of flux here. With that one gun saved over, they will be able to buy through, but it will cost them everything that they have, which means if they lose here... They're going to get economically reset, and you'll see Ents start to really create quite a large round gap for themselves. Same thing from Sunny again. Very minimal utility, just straight up catwalk yet again. Run the straight down middle, maybe a, a flash. Yampy once again joins him towards that catwalk area. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is more or less an exact mirror of what Ents did in the last round on their T side. And it's an exact mirror of what G2 did in the last round on their CT side. Neither of these teams switching things up whatsoever. G2 very much playing towards the extremities. Flash and the run boost, very nicely done. G2 doesn't have the AWP this time, though, on long, which could be a problem if Ents decides to start making their way into A. Oh, absolutely. Again, this upper dark push coming out dry this time. How the hell has Aminek got that much damage with that UMP jumping into midair, but eventually does go down. Next, it gets one back as well. Things starting to look a little bit different now. Ents have not... Confirmed a push into the A bomb site. Bomb's actually gone all 
all the way back to long, which is where G2 are still holding. Well, you're worrying about that, but look at Hunter. He's all the way through T-Spawn. He's coming in on the biggest flank possible. Kenny's gone down, though, and now Jax just needs to buy some oh. time for this flank to come through. He's not going to be able to do that as Ariel takes his head straight off. Free haircuts. Yampy down as well. Back to the two oh. on three. And Sunny, Sergey also low. Look at this timing. Hunter should be able to secure the round from here. Sergey hasn't even spotted him on that cross, and that's going to be both found. Bomb in their hands, and it's all up to Sergey. He's got 20 seconds. Mm. Un this is unrealistic. That's all about timing, isn't it? If Sergey turns around and looks at bedroom doors at the right time, he probably gets a free kill in the side of uh, Hunter there. But in the end, Hunter gets through into long, gets that double kill, and G2 are going to secure the round as a result. If Enz would have just walked up short and gone into the A bomb site as they did last round, they would have got that bomb down. They would have had a post plant, and it could have been a completely different result. But... G2 do scrape one away. We're back to 11 to 8. So three rounds, the difference. Ends have got money. Oh, do they have money to buy in here? It's a bit of an awkward one. Great work from Hunter, though. Finding that timing right when G2 needs it. Going to be a tactical pause as well for Ents. So we haven't seen too many tact pauses so far today. Take a look at that timing from the last round as this pause does ensue. So we head into the little skybox. Got Mr. Hunter here. The man's just gunning it straight through T spawn there. <laughs> Sergey, you can see he's very fixated on that mid push, but uh, unfortunately, maybe a little bit too fixated. Still looking at it. Hunter sneaks past into long. And that's the timing that he needed. And didn't really have any idea. You can see Sonny, he's just anti flash aerial. They're both focused on that A site, but. You can see, very nicely done. He threads the needle there. I think it was Hunter through the T-spawn. That allows G2 to get themselves a sneaky round. That, to be fair, I think Edge probably should have taken away. Well, they didn't. And I wonder whether Ents will succumb to the same problems that G2 did on train, where they have the advantage, but they're not winning those critical rounds. And thus, the team that's behind, in this instance, it's G2, starts to make a comeback. Not quite there yet. Ents and G2 have sort of been tit for tat in this second half. Oh, Nexa going to be fed that one. Alu, a little bit slow on the trigger. Not expecting Nexa on the off angle there. And that's a nice man advantage for G2 now. Ents looking like they might just be posturing to go for a bit of short control. Very spread out, waiting to punish aggression. One man disadvantage here for Ants. Decent amount of utility across the board for the boys here after they've lost that pick in towards middle. They're just going to creep up catwalk, but you can see G2 already somewhat set up for this Kenny S as well as uh, Nexa towards Goose. They've got a pretty good setup to defend a uh, short A hit here. And Yampy's going to get on the line dry. Missed shot though. Missed opportunity. Nade should do big damage. And it does. Yampi and Sergey go low, but they're going to have to continue to push into the bomb site. Aerial drops early. That is a beautiful incendiary for G2. It's going to really slow Ents down. They've got nowhere to go. They've just got to fight for control of short, and luckily Sunny does win that duel. He's got himself a gun now, but he has to get into the site. He's the one that's carrying the bomb, and he needs to plant that pretty quickly. 16 seconds left, Matt. Oh, and let's see if they can even get to site. Just two men on A ramp is looking way too much at the moment. Crossing through. Kenny at the ready. Him and Jack just teaming up perfectly. Nexa in the mix as well. Beautiful defense, and that's going to put G2 on nine rounds. Now, there was actually an opening in that round where the pop flash didn't go as expected for G2, and everyone got blind. If Ents took that moment, maybe there was a chance for him to get that bomb down. But again, look, not clearing those angles, not clearing out Goose. They just went for the gamble plant and really just lost the round from there. Some of the rifle is really carrying G2, kicking and screaming through this game right now. You can see Kenny is having a bit of a shocker, given that a lot of that was on the T side and he hasn't had the AWP on the CT side yet. So this is where you'd expect him to really get rolling and at least he gets the pistols, he's hitting at least that shot. Ariel though, close with a P250. Might have been in with a chance there. Will in the end actually just drop the bomb. And not in a good spot for Ents at all. No, not in Kenny's crosshairs. Eyes on the prize, and he's going to hit the shoulder as well. Sergey, he has to go a bit wider, but perfect setup coming out from G2 to keep objective control, and that's going to be 10 on the board now for G2, who are just one away from tying things up here. Mm. So, 
I really hope that uh, those couple of kills against the Pistols sort of get Kenny S in the right mindset to start rolling on this AWP for the CT side. So I think Nexa has been doing a hell of a lot of work here, as well as Hunter or Jax from time to time. Some pretty nice impact from those lads. So the AWP to put the cherry on top would be a really, really valuable proposition here for G2. Not a fight for long here from Ants. Big amounts of utility thrown on in, and Alu's gotten the pick through mid. So things slow down here for Ents, and they do win the duel on long. It's going to be so problematic for G2. Look at that spray from Huge. Yampi. And, well, look at that round, because you're going to have to spend a little bit of time just waiting now for Amanek to save that gun, or perhaps Ents to yes. chase him down. Speaking of a little bit of time, that's all that well, there was in the round. Mm. 30 seconds on site, planting already. Ents with the change in pace, really catching G2 off. Couple of nasty shots there as well. Yampi with the double to open up. And look, they're going to be very happy with this situation. 12 to 10 at the end of this one. And look, if they can get the gun out of Amanek's hands, yes, that's going to be extra damage to the economy. But Ents, how many guns can they afford to throw away? Pretty much none at this point. I think that might have been the first kill that Alu's got in this half for Ents, but if it's you're, you're counter-orping the, uh, the AWPer on G2's side, on that T side, uh, it's a pretty big impact kill to get, especially with how Kenny's playing at the moment. First gun round, he just loses that AWP duel. That's going to be something that might send him a little bit off the deep end. Nice shot from Alu there. You can see Kenny trying to play over the top of that smoke, trying to find that advantage. And then Entz just finding some great timings here towards that long area. Yampi, he threads his way into that corner smoke and uh, just bides his time until Entz can send him out with some more flashes. And he creates so much space there. Even if he doesn't get some of those kills, I imagine that some of the other rifling for on Entz will have come through. Ridiculous. Another kill onto Kenny for Alu. Two rounds in a row he's picked. And that one straight through smoke. That's massive. Ents are starting to pressure toward the B-bomb site now as well. Amnet cops a grenade right at his feet, down to 50 HP. So already you're starting to feel that tension building over toward the B side of the map. And that draws the extra rotation in for G2, leaving middle open. And Ents, they can walk straight through the front door. Yeah, who steps up here for G2 now? For the most part, it's been Nexa. Um, to be able to make that impact when it doesn't seem like there's much happening. G2 going to go aggressive towards long now. Ariel's keeping tabs on that and does find that initial pick onto Nexa. Oh, and oh. another as well. That's the round, surely. G2 just need to save from this point. But Jax is going to look for a re-entry in the round. No, no. knife out. <laughs> Turns around just at the right moment. You don't want to be doing that. And it almost cost him his life. There, Amanek. Sticking around a bit too long. G2 have gotten that bomb plant down. Now is where Ents can start looking to hunt these two guns down. They've got a bit of extra cash to play with. They know it's a five on two. And they're up to 13-10. Things are starting to look like the nails are being banged into the coffin for G2. Sergei's in such a good spot, but that's a nice little peek around the corner from Jax. It's going to put an end to him. They don't want to give up these guns, and they're not going to go down without a fight, that is for sure. But Ariel has found the back of Amanek, and he'll know that Jax is close by here as well. Unfortunately, he's been caught in the end by Sunny. Nicely done. G2 with that full loss bonus. It's it's uh, absolutely God Alu in uh, in the server right now. The man is just on a bit of a tear. CT side, he went 18 for 6. Then he slowed down first couple of rounds of T side. But these last two rounds in a row, he's picked Kenny S both times in the AWP versus AWP duel. Now you're really starting to see Ents put a lot of pressure on G2. G2 into the half by the long stack from them here. Sunny just spotting what he can, and he doesn't see anything. So now you're going to start to see Ents actually commit out long. This is where the counter flash is going to come in for G2. They've been very patient with holding it. Nexus sends it out. In it comes, and so do G2 now. Mm -hmm. And it's uneven trades. It's no trades at all. So Kenny unable just to thread the needle. He's going to go down as well. Three for Sunny, and he's hungry for more. Nexa, last alive. What have you got for us? Well, that's a small thing, but that's the kind of thing that makes a big difference on your T side of dust too. The protocols from Ents there, after they don't see anything. Oh, that's a nice shot from Nexa, but that's all they'll get. The protocols to not just walk out long idly. You see so many lower level teams just misc it out long and just stand in the open. Oh, I'm going to set up my execute or set up my smoke. Maybe I'm just going to stand in the open here and you can get caught by those pistols. You can see Ents, they haven't committed out into the open. They're not trying to take that pick control too quickly. One player at blue, anti-flash. You got one in the long heart. Even when that flash does come out, 
G2 still get cleaned up because Ents is in safe enough positions, and that's just good practice, good protocols being put in place by Ents to make sure they don't get caught off guard by any BS. Time is of the essence now for G2 because they're running out of it. They've only got the two rounds left to play with. Ents are getting very close to actually making that 2-0 happen today. Mm. Same thing for Ents. You're seeing it even more of a commitment. Sunny just runs down mid, jumps up, catwalk. Yampi walks up there as well. All okay. four players in position. Ents now throwing a utility set. Sergey trying to keep those players towards the B site. And he's successfully kept three of them committed over there. And out comes the catwalk execute at 1 minute 20 very quickly into this oh, round. What can Kenny do from here, though? Flashed off the line. It looks like they're going to set up for the oh. retake. Missed opportunity. That was on a platter. But Kenny... Not looking sharp enough on that one. Now, 5v5 for the retake. Where did G2 go? Oh, look at where Sergey is right now. They've gone right oh. past him, but he doesn't hit the shots. And Hunter actually takes him down. A chance now in the round for G2. Five on four, but they're lacking utility. They don't have defuse oh, hits. Oh, no. And, and that Molly's, gonna... it's still in a good spot, to be honest. It's going to cook aerial, but it doesn't matter. It keeps G2 at bay. A knife in the back for Yampi. What is going on? Oh, it's a two on three. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. This is a messy round from Ents, but it's going to be a victory. They're going to get Ooh. to 15, and it looks like Sunny might even finish off Hunter and Amanek as well before they can save their guns. It's horrible news oh. for G2. So much pressure just forcing out a plethora of mistakes, but it works out in the end. The Molly st stops G2 in their tracks. Yes, it separated the defenses there on short for Ents, but again, it was just like, what the hell is going on? Yampi, nice 2k. The spray transfer was nuts to secure the round, and that is how Ents got themselves on to match point. Was there really a knife in that round? Yeah, he knifed. <laughs> I think Alu knifed his teammate in the back. Yeah, running back to site. What is going on? And, and I think it was Yampi who then Took that as uh, took that into his stride and gets a 2k with the sick tra spray transfer. So maybe it's the harsh, you know, tough love approach from Alu, just yep. trying to show some of the youngsters how it's done. You know, go get that 2k on 30 HP, bro. Give him let's a little see bit it. of a smack, make him play better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look. We don't this. advocate for that anyway. Potential last round here, G2. They've gone for the four-man stack at the A site, looking to just go with strength in numbers. Aminex solo at B has the world on his shoulders. Yeah, well. Don't know if Ents are necessarily going to commit to mid to B here. They're just running in a bit of a default, throwing that utility pressure. This has actually caused a bit of panic for G2. You can see they're rotating over after that mid to B smoke comes out. And Sunny's just going to push into that mid to B smoke and sit in it, waiting for it to fade favorably for him as Ents starting to put pressure on Catwalk now. Oh, and that's a solid position as well. Able to deny Amanek on the rotation. They've got full control. Oh, sure. yeah, full control of sight. This is it. Enter doing it. 2-0 oh. on the brink. 16-10. to 10, And they've done it. 2-0. to Enter take the W.